Better Call Saul Season 6 Episode 7 Ending Explained The mid-season finale is finally upon us, and it's safe to say that it definitely delivered. In the closing moments, we got something that we didn't expect, and a different meaning to the term D-Day. But what did it all mean? Well, let's get into it. Here is Better Call Saul Season 6 Episode 7 Ending Explained Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The mid-season finale was essentially split into two separate stories that we were watching unfold and gradually come together at the end. We were watching Kim and Jimmy's plan to take down Howard Hamlin finally come to fruition. And we were watching Lalo Salamanca waiting out in the sewers, waiting patiently to expose the lab. We picked up where we left off at the end of episode 6, where Jimmy and Kim found out about Casemiro's broken arm which ruined their photos that they previously took of Jimmy handing the actor and lookalike of Casemiro an envelope. We found out that this was in fact the same envelope that was supposedly full of money and was connected to the $20,000 withdrawal that we saw Jimmy do in a previous episode, where the PI got some snaps and informed Howard. Once we saw the photos get reshot by the same camera guy and the same actor participate, we saw the photos get developed and the person working on them stated, you can't rush the process. I think this shone a light on how both Jimmy and Kim are at the end of the plan that they set in place an extremely long time ago, and it's been something that they definitely haven't rushed. They've spent time and meticulous thinking in executing the plan to take down Howard, and this was a small but subtle and final nod to that. Once the photos were ready, we saw Jimmy and Kim wipe the drug that they got from the vet all over them. So we then knew that Howard's pupils were going to dilate. This drug didn't really do anything to your mental state, but more so gave the appearance of looking like you were on drugs. We saw Jimmy ran out and then handed the photos over to somebody driving in a car, and this was in fact Howard's PI that he had following Jimmy. So this was a reveal in itself too. The fact that Howard's PI had been working for Jimmy this whole time. We learned how later on in the episode, but essentially by Jimmy phoning up, pretending to be the detective agency, and claiming that they've changed their number, so that Jimmy's fake number could then be responsible for the call, which would then lead them to hire the man that they did, allowing Jimmy to know every move that Howard was making, keeping him one step ahead of the game, and highlighting that he definitely doesn't miss a thing. We saw the Sandpiper case come to fruition in the conference room, and it was here where we saw the effects of the substance was starting to impact Howard. It caused his pupils to dilate, and we then saw the real Judge Casemiro enter the room as the impartial mediator. We then knew why there was so much energy being put into retaking those photographs and just how important it was to the plan. This is what pushed Howard over the edge. As he recognized the face from the photos, he spoke up and made his voice heard. Asking for the photos to be retrieved from his office, showing that Casemiro was receiving a bribe and that he didn't want to participate. However, it seems as though the PI switched the photos when Howard wasn't looking for some plain images of Jimmy in the park handing a frisbee, causing Howard to look like an obsessed maniac. The devastating sad thing is although he appeared to come across as extremely paranoid and like he was severely mentally ill, the sad truth is that he was telling the truth and had essentially worked out every move correctly, down to the smallest of details, showing just how smart he actually is. But he found himself in a position where the more he said, the worse it looked on him. Kim and Jimmy were listening in pure relief and joy, as they were hearing their plan prove to be impenetrable, and that Howard was digging himself into a deeper and deeper hole, the one that they wanted him in. This led to the Sandpiper case finally getting settled, allowing Jimmy and Kim to win in their sense that Howard's reputation from his peers is in the mud, and that money is definitely coming their way. As they listened on, they were celebrating in their own way in the background, highlighting just how ruthless they are with no clear remorse for their actions. From there, it climaxed with Howard running off to eventually go and confront Jimmy and Kim in the final 10 minutes. Whilst all of this was going on, we saw Lalo holding out, playing the long game, just like we were seeing Jimmy and Kim do all throughout the episode, and was the overall theme of the season. He was keeping watch on an area that he believed to be a lab that Gus was running and operating. This tied together the reasoning for him seeking out Werner's wife and one of the boys, one can imagine that the person he was having a fight with last episode informed him of the location. We saw Lalo had a prime viewpoint underneath the road as he then went to video record a message and claimed how he was going to go into the lab, kill all of the guards, and expose the truth. We did see as the video ended, he was contemplating whether or not it was the right thing to do. You could see that by his movement and facial expressions. Following this, we saw him call the care home where Hector resides. As the line transferred, Lalo hung up the phone abruptly one point. 
If you listen carefully, there's an intermittent crackling that occurred when the phone transferred to Hector's line, one that we didn't hear when he was speaking to the reception. This showed that the line was bugged and that there was somebody listening on the other end. You could tell that Lalo assumed that it was Gus and Mike due to the fact that once he called back, I feel he told the opposite of what he was actually going to do. He informed Hector that he was going back to plan A. This is something that I don't think exists or at least Lalo has no intentions of doing. We saw that this call was being listened to and he saw Mike walk out and drive off to approach Gus. Mike informed Gus of the call and that he had removed all men from the low priority locations and that they are all systems go at Gus's house to take out Lalo when he does eventually arrive. I don't think he's going to arrive. I think his intentions were to clear out the laundry which he was eyeing up. It appears there is only one crew left there, so it could be easy picking for Lalo. That's one theory anyway. We heard that all Gus has to do is drive home calmly, which is something we've not seen him be all season. So it will be interesting to see if he manages to achieve that. I personally think that the removal of the men and getting the majority of them in one location was Lalo's intentions, due to the fact that he knew that they were listening in. Why would he want to inform them of their plan? After this happened, we then got the final climax of the episode. It was starting to feel like one that wasn't necessarily going to be explosive, but these final moments did definitely deliver. Howard went round to Jimmy and Kim's to confront them and to state how he knew about everything that they did. We started the entrance with the shot of a candle blowing as the door opened up. This played an importance a few moments later. Howard delivered a monologue that I thought was rather poignant of the character's journey. He went on to talk about Chuck, how Jimmy had always been a good-for-nothing person with no morals, but how Kim had the world at the palm of her hands, being the up-and-coming talent that she was, but she chose a life with Jimmy that involved scheming. Howard finally had the front to stand up for himself. Why? Because he had nothing left to lose. As he explained, his name was in the mud, his marriage was in ruin, but he believed he could come back and the first step to that was by addressing it all and then being able to move on. Once Jimmy and Kim were done with playing on the wiser and had got their fulfillment listening to what their actions had led to, they asked Howard to leave. It was here where we then got another shot mid-confrontation of the candle moving in the wind, as we then cut to a shot of Jimmy looking in complete despair as he saw Lalo walk in. Jimmy believed Lalo was dead and he uttered the word how, which made sense as he literally felt like he just saw a ghost. The candle moving with the door opening was almost like a shot from a horror movie, when you see ghosts or paranormal situations occur. I thought it was a nice touch. Kim, however, didn't look as dismantled as Jimmy did due to the fact that Mike had informed her that Lalo was actually alive in a previous episode, so she almost knew that this day could potentially arrive. Lalo walked in, put his weapon together, slowly, calmly, and again leaned in on the all-the-time-in-the-world element of what this season has been about when he told Howard that he could take his time. Lalo claimed how he wanted to speak to his lawyers in an extremely cold and menacing way, and he then proceeded to fire at Howard, causing him to be killed. It was a moment that I certainly didn't expect, and one that both Jimmy and Kim will not have wanted to have caused. D-Day wasn't meant to be like that. Ruin Howard's career and reputation? Yes. Cost him his life? No. I feel Jimmy and Kim are going to feel the brunt of Howard's death. I feel more so Kim than Jimmy as their plan was what eventually led Howard to be stood in the room where he eventually met his fate. From there, the episode cut to black and the mid-season finale drew to a close. We've been told that the show was not supposed to be set up like a cliffhanger, but it's more so the scheduling that's forced it to be split like that. So I'm extremely excited and intrigued to see the repercussions that could come back to haunt the pair and what exactly is in store for Mike and Gus. Howard is too high profile of a person for his disappearance to just be swept under the carpet. With him hailing Jimmy's name in the final episode, and how his intentions are to bring him down, it could point the finger at Jimmy and lead to some awkward questions in episode 8. Or it may be seen as though he's disappeared, based off of how he was acting at the end of episode 7 and the mental state that he was in. I thought this episode was a good one. It was one that really allowed the previous six episodes of Build Up to climax in a way that, although small in runtime, had the world of weight in impact. It's left me wanting more and I can't wait to see where part 2 picks up from. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.